facts about this all-time favorite. This is Facts First presents 15 Incredible Facts About the Flintstones. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. Click that notification bell icon to make sure you're updated when we release a new video. The Flintstones is arguably the most popular cartoon of all time. First aired in the fall of 1960, The Flintstones has become a key part of pop culture. With characters like Fred, Wilma, Betty, and Barney, this animated sitcom based in the Stone Ages features their daily activities and day-to-day -day problems. This lighthearted, funny, and endearing sitcom still holds value today, even after 60 years. Let's dive into 15 incredible facts about the Flintstones. Number 1. Different Families The Flintstones was created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, the founders of Hanna-Barbera Production Studio. Hanna-Barbera produced the series and went through many ideas and considerations before settling on the show's details. In fact, they considered a Native American family, a Pilgrim family, a Hillbilly family, and a Roman family before settling on the Flintstones. During 1972, Hanna-Barbera produced another animated sitcom called The Roman Holidays, based on a family living in 63 CE. The idea originated from their initial concept of a Roman and family. Number 2. Flagstones Before they were Flintstones, they were Flagstones. Yep, that's right, the show used to be called The Flagstones. However, popular comic strip High and Lois starred a family called The Flagstones. After a copyright claim, The Flagstones became The Flintstones. The titles were too similar and could easily be confused. The pilot episode prior to the name change was never aired on television, instead later discovered in a New York warehouse by Cartoon Network in 1993. In fact, the pilot featured Fred attempting to spear fish in the pool. The episode was almost identical to season 3's The Swimming Pool. Number 3. Barbera's Plea Joseph Barbera, part of the creative production duo Hanna-Barbera, pitched the show's concept for a full two months before it sold. Barbera stayed in New York for eight weeks, living in a hotel, while pitching the show's idea to various networks and sponsors. He was turned down by many networks and executives. By the eighth week, no one was interested. During the last day of his trip, ABC Network agreed to the show, and production started shortly thereafter. Number 4. Pebbles Fred and Wilma are the parents of the famous animated child Pebbles Flintstone. Pebbles is one of the most beloved animated characters of all time, known for her red hair and cute appearance. However, a concept sketch for the show, prior to airing, featured a baby boy as the child of Fred and Wilma. In fact, the child was supposed to be released in Season 1, not Season 3. Prior to the show's release, the idea was scrapped and producers instead focused on husband and wife. By the third season, producers were ready to introduce a child. Initially, they decided to introduce a boy. It wasn't until a popular toy company informed them a girl doll would be much easier to sell as the market was larger and more profitable. The producers took their advice and created Pebbles Flintstone. Number 5. Brill Cream Alan Reed is the voice of Fred Flintstone. He spoke his mind when presented with the idea of Yahoo as Fred's famous catchphrase. After pondering, Reed came up with a better idea. He suggested Yabba Dabba Doo, inspired by Brill Cream's advertisement campaign. Brill Cream was a hairstyling product of the 50s, with advertisements using the A Little Dabble Do Ya slogan. The producers agreed, and Fred's catchphrase became etched in pop culture. Number 6. Barney's Voice Fred's neighbor, Barney Rubble, was voiced by actor Mel Blanc for most of the series. However, in a tragic car accident, Blanc's skull became fractured and he went into a coma. During his recovery, Dawes Butler played the voice of Barney for five episodes. As he continued to recover, producers of the show set up the necessary recording equipment in Blank's hospital room so he could record. After Blank was discharged from the hospital, he recorded from his home, as he was still bedridden. In fact, he recorded while in a full-body cast, which required him to lay flat on his back. Castmates B. Benedaret, Betty, and Vader Pill, Wilma, recorded with him from his bedside. He slowly recovered with a wheelchair and crutches. Number and horn singers from his musical group. Number 8. Bugs Bunny's Inspiration Even though the theme song for season 3 was based on Beethoven, season 1 and 2 were based on another sitcom. Prior to season 3, the theme song was called Rise and Shine. This theme song was inspired by The Bugs Bunny Show. However, in the third season, producers decided to change it, perhaps due to the fact Bugs Bunny also aired on ABC. In fact, in 1960, ABC released a closed-circuit presentation for ABC affiliates. The clip showcased Hal Peary, along with two other actors, debating the decision to keep Bugs Bunny or Flintstones on air. The actors were fighting over the network's decision. They introduced both shows with a bit of comedy and dialogue in between. Number 9. That would never happen today. In the 60s, it was common to see characters on a show endorsing cigarette products from sponsors. However, not today. For example, during an episode, Fred and Barney are shown lighting cigarettes and having a smoke together. What's worse? They smoked Winston cigarettes, as Winston was the sitcom's sponsor. Years after airing, producers received backlash for allowing cigarettes on a show with animation for children. Number 10. Suing. Yes or no? 
Actor Jackie Gleason debated suing Hanna-Barbera. Gleason starred on The Honeymooners, a show with countless similarities to The Flintstones. During an interview, Gleason said he considered pursuing legal action against the production company, but eventually decided against it. Gleason stated he didn't want to be the person who took the beloved character Fred Flintstone off the air. Hanna-Barbera commented on the situation and said they took the comparison as a major compliment. Number 11. Honeymooners Writers the Honeymooners writers were also hired by production duo William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. They thought they were hiring skilled and talented writers. The writers were previously successful with live-action series. Sidney Zelinka and Herbert Finn were previous writers for The Honeymooners. However, after receiving the script, Joseph Barbera called them terrible. He said their work was a waste of money. In fact, Hanna Barbera paid the writers $3,000 and they were totally unsatisfied with the end product. The scripts were unsuitable for animation and contained too many words for the quick-moving comedy. Barbera said the scripts needed more action. Oddly enough, the writers were experienced in live action. Number 12. Breaking Boundaries The Flintstones was the first and only animated series at the time to feature spouses sleeping in the same bed. To be technical, 1947's Mary Kay and Johnny slept in the same bed also. However, The Flintstones was the first animated series to normalize this. Number 13. Emmy Award Nomination the Flintstones became the first ever animation to receive an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Comedy Series. However, the award went to The Jack Benny Show in 1961. Interestingly enough, The Flintstones was nominated for the award in their first season. The first season received a 100% approval rating based on nine industry critics. However, not everyone agrees with this. While the series is often called a classic, many critics note that times have changed and the series is not as popular as it used to be. Number 14. Betty's Voice the voice of Betty Rubble was spoken by B. Benadoret. However, June Foray was the first voice. Prior to the season's debut, Foray played Betty Rubble. Here's where it gets interesting. Benadoret was the voice of Looney Tunes' Granny. When she left the series, she was replaced by none other than Foray. Benadoret is an acclaimed actress, as she was the original selection for Ethel in the iconic show I Love Lucy. Once she left the Flintstones, Jerry Johnson replaced her for season 5 and 6. B. Benadoret was ill since 1963 after a doctor found a tumor on her lungs. She passed away in 1968 of lung cancer and pneumonia. Number 15. Bewitched? During the sixth season, Samantha and Darren Stevens appeared in the sitcom. Frank, Barney, and Darren go camping alone, saying women cannot participate as it's too rough. The women won't back down as Samantha takes Wilma, Betty, and their children camping using her magical twitch nose. The episode follows the women as they attempt to show out the boys. In fact, this is not the first time Bewitched and the Flintstones have worked together, as the opening animation for Bewitched was produced by Hanna-Barbera. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed these 15 behind-the-scenes facts about the Flintstones. We know this classic was the cornerstone for many children growing up in the 60s, 70s, and beyond. Due to its popularity, the Flintstones lives on today through books, movies, toys, and of course, reruns. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and subscribe to our channel. We want to hear from you. Let us know down in the comment box which episode of the Flintstones is your favorite and which fact shocked you most. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.